This is KGW News at Noon. The local woman found guilty of treating her child's cancer with CBD oil in 2019 will serve 90 days in jail with a two year probation period. That decision was handed down around 9 o'clock this morning. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Drew Carney. Christina Dixon was found guilty of interfering with her child's care late last year, but it was five years ago when this case first surfaced as Dixon tried to prevent her child from getting surgery to remove a tumor from her liver. Dixon opted, uh, opted that is to treat her daughter's cancer with alternative and naturopathic uh, remedies instead, like CBD oil. The case became a cornerstone in the debate over parents' rights to treat how their children are taken care of, regardless of any established medical advice. The Clackamas County District Attorney called what Dixon was doing child abuse. And uh, I think the important takeaway from this is that in Clackamas County, you will be prosecuted for child abuse and that we are going to see these cases through to the end and the judge saw it through to the end. And we appreciate that. KGW investigative reporter Kyle Aboshi will break down today's sentencing for us coming up later this afternoon during KGW News at 4. We're also learning more information about a deadly crash that happened last weekend in the Buckman neighborhood of Southeast Portland. According to court documents, witnesses say the suspect in the crash appeared to intentionally hit the victim at a homeless camp. Court documents say a witness saw 22 year old Shane McKeever drive into the several tents there going 40 to 50 miles an hour before hitting the victim. The witness says McKeever then turned the car around and tried to run them over before he stopped and ditched the car. Police say McKeever was stopped by neighbors a short time later. Officers also found out later that the car he was in was reported stolen. KGW's Blair Best is covering this story for us and we'll have more on what those court documents reveal coming up on KGW News at 4. All right, we'll take a break from the headlines right here for a look outside. We're going up to Timberline. Some people out there taking advantage of that new snow that uh, has fallen so far this week. Rod, it's been a snowy week thus far up on the mountain. We saw some flakes uh, flying around here yesterday. What's the latest down here in the valley? Well, down here in the valley, it's been mostly light rain. And one of the parts of our story today is the snow levels are actually rising. They'll continue to rise tonight and they'll get all the way up to about 4,500 feet during the day tomorrow. That means Wednesday afternoon, potentially government camp is a wet mix to all rain, uh, but snow levels will come back down. Here's a look at where we stand on the mountain since we were just looking. Timberline's base now 126 inches over the past 24 hours. They picked up 27 inches of snow. All the bases are now 100 or better, except for ski ball, which of course sets lower in elevation, but still pretty good base at 64 inches. We've had hours of steady rain this morning, and now we're starting to see on the noon hour some drying coming in from the west. It's been mostly very light snow up in the, the Cascades. Uh, right now we've got some rain starting to move into Astoria. It's cloudy for the most part. You can just make out Tillamook Head from Gearhart by the Seas uh, resort camera looking down from Gearhart towards Seaside. Uh, and just as cloudy, cloudy over the Dundee Hills, that's Domain Serene Winery, and here's downtown Portland. Current temperature outside holding in the 40s. Part of the rising snow level means that if you are traveling this afternoon, here's the coast range, 36, higher up 1,400 feet, 40 degrees. There's that rising snow level. That was a snow-covered highway this morning, but now it will just be wet over the coast range the remainder of today, tonight, and tomorrow. Portland will hold in the mid-40s, I think, in the coming hours with rain at times this afternoon. There is another winter storm. It's a big one coming into the Cascades tomorrow into Thursday. We'll talk more about that coming up. All right, that's about uh, 10 minutes from now, Rod. We'll see you then. The union representing workers at Oregon's seven public universities says it's reached a tentative agreement with management at those schools. The union represents 4,600 workers altogether, including university advisors, cooks, maintenance staff, and janitors. The union says this deal will give its members, among other things, a 15% cost of living increase over the next two years and a one-time $1,500 bonus in April. But active members still need to vote to ratify this new contract before it can take effect. A multi-million dollar lawsuit has been filed against the owner of a Portland 7-Eleven and the parent company itself over a deadly shooting that happened inside the store. The shooting happened in November of 2022 at a 7-Eleven near the Portland airport. Prosecutors say there was a dispute at the store and 27 year old Stevie Moore shot and killed 49 year old Jason King's father. 
The lawsuit alleges a 7-Eleven clerk, uh, clerk that is paid more under the table to watch over that store and bought a gun that he kept behind the counter. The attorney for the victim's family says Moore was unqualified to be a security guard. They're suing for $3 million. There are suggestions that uh, one reason they were paying this guy was to provide some level of security, and other was to give him you know, some food and a little money so he wouldn't steal from them. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the picture of this uh, dead-end place. Moore claims self-defense and pleaded not guilty to charges of second-degree murder and unlawful use of a weapon. We reached out to the owner of that 7-Eleven, but so far haven't heard back. Another work session is scheduled tonight to make changes to Oregon Measure 110. That's the voter approved law that decriminalized small amounts of hard drugs in the state. There was a public hearing last night that gave lawmakers, stakeholders and community members all a chance to weigh in on the proposed changes. KGW's Catherine Cook was there. We know that we have to take action. We've got five Oregonians are overdosing and dying every day. Urgency at the Oregon State Capitol on Monday as lawmakers heard arguments for and against House Bill 4002-24. It's the latest iteration of the effort aimed at recriminalizing small amounts of hard drugs, overturning the main tenet of Measure 110. We have a goal to get people into treatment and recovery and not jail. And we agree that the current system, the way it is set up, is not working. The original bill, crafted by Democrats, is now a compromise with Republicans, featuring stiffer penalties. Simple drug possession would be called a drug enforcement misdemeanor, a new type of crime. Those convicted of it would initially get probation for a maximum of 18 months, not jail. Though violating those terms could mean courts could send people to jail for up to six months. We need harsher penalties for dealers. Originally, Democrats had proposed what's called a deflection program. People caught in possession could use it to avoid arrest and conviction entirely. But under the proposed amendments, it would be up to each county to opt in, a big sticking point with critics who worry not everyone will get a fair chance. I think for us, it's a, right now about killing House Bill 4002, and that's because we haven't been heard. Gloria Ochoa Sandoval is with Unite Oregon, a nonprofit focused on a multicultural movement for justice. But the reality is that we are trying to fight racial biases in the program, and that alone is already allowing for a greater opportunity of counties that have engaged in racial bias interactions with community members to initially choose criminalization. In a racial impact study at commission, the state learned the bill would result in about 2,200 new convictions. Of them, they found 103 would be for black or African American Oregonians. To be on par with white Oregonians, that number would need to be 74. Please pass this bill and save lives. Many who support 4002 and its amendments say this is about saving lives. Juanina Swartwood thinks of her granddaughter who's fighting drug addiction. Measure 110 didn't cause her addiction, but decriminalizing hard drugs, normalizing their use, and acceptance didn't help. And then there's Aaron Martinick. Her brother Taylor died after taking an oxycodone pill. He didn't know it was laced with fentanyl. We need to recriminalize the possession of drugs because people are walking around with lethal items in their pockets, similar to guns, but what's different about them is you have no idea that it's lethal until you're dead. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Tonight's work session, by the way, is scheduled for 5 o'clock. A full vote on this new House bill could happen in the House floor or on the House floor, that is, as early as Thursday. And if it passes in the House, it'll move on to the State Senate.